Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 47 of my Java video tutorial series. Today I'm going to be showing you how to draw two-dimensional shapes and go over a whole bunch of other things in regards to two-dimensional geometry inside of Java. So let's just get into the code. I'm going to start importing my libraries that I need here. JavaXSwing.jComponent. And jComponent, like I talked about before, is the base class for creating all Swing components, even custom ones. And we're going to come in here, JavaX, Swing, and I'm going to be drawing everything in a JFrame. So, of course, we're going to need to import the JFrame library. Java Auth's going to allow me to create interfaces and also allow me to paint graphics. This is going to be really simple. I'm just trying to dumb it down, and all the code from this is available in a link underneath of the video. And you should get this stuff and play with it. That's the only way you're going to learn it. And this last library here is for defining two-dimensional shapes inside of Java. All right, another thing I'm going to do here is I told you before that you can assign serial numbers to multiple classes for compatibility's sake in the future. Well, I'm going to shut that off right here, right like that. Something I've covered in the past, but no big deal. And then we're going to come in here and go public class lesson 47. And we're just going to extend JFrame. So we'll be able to create a frame here for us to draw in on the screen. Public static void, define main. And then inside of main, we're just going to create a new object called Java Lesson 47, right like that. And then public Java Lesson 47, define my constructor for this object. And then I need to set my size for my frame, and I'm just going to make this 500. Don't expect anything beautiful in this tutorial. I'm just going to go through one method after another so that you know how to draw multiple different types of shapes. Give my frame a name. Set default. Close operation so that everything is automatically closed whenever they hit the close button on the frame on the screen. And I'm going to add a new component. It's called draw stuff. Border layout. And it's going to be set in the center of the frame that comes on the screen. And then we want the frame and everything to show up on the screen. So we're just going to set that to true. Then I have to actually create draw stuff. No problem. So I'm going to go private class draw stuff. And since this is going to be a new component, I'm going to base this off of the J component. And then you have to define a function called paint. I'm just going to call this graphics G. And graphics right here is the base class that's going to allow us to draw on our components inside of the JFrame. And then I'm going to extend graphics so that I can draw two-dimensional shapes and images with graphics 2D. And I'm just going to call this graph2. And then I need to set some preferences in regards to how this should be rendered. Everything should be rendered on the screen. And I'm not going to get into all the specifics here. I'm just going to go rendering hint. Basically what I'm doing here is I'm setting up what's called anti-aliasing, which is going to clean up the edges of whatever I draw on the screen. Bounce down to the next line, rendering hints. And then of course I can come in here and come down to value anti-aliasing on, which is going to save me some time from having to type that in. And there we go. Now there are tons of shape interfaces that are available, tons of different Different shapes that you can use to draw onto the screen. I'm going to show you most of them here. Again, if you want to see them all, the link underneath the video is going to show you. Okay, so let's say I want to draw a line. How exactly do I do that? Well, I'm going to go new line 2D dot, and then you're going to see a whole bunch of different things pop up here on the screen. And I'm going to choose to use this float version. As you can see, there's a whole bunch of different versions here. So I'm just going to double click on that, and it's going to throw everything inside of here on the screen. So this is going to really help. Basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define the upper left hand corner for X and Y. So in this situation, I'm going to put in 20. And then I'm going to put in 90. I'm going to draw like a really bad picture on the screen. And then I'm going to come in here and put the ending points for the line, which is going to be the ending points in the X, Y dimension. And there you go. So that's going to draw a line. And you can draw any type of line that you'd like to draw with that. And you can, you can draw all kinds of complicated shapes. I'm going to show you here how to draw an arc or a curve or whatever you want to call it. Again, you're just going to do the same sort of thing again. New arc 2D. And in this situation, I'm going to use double right here. You can see it throws everything in there, makes everything real nice. Basically what you're going to do is define your X and Y starting position. And then you're going to define the width and height of the arc. And then you're going to define the starting angle position. And then you're going to define the extent. Well, the angular extent refers to how many degrees the arc continues from the starting angle. So let's put an imaginary point at 45 degrees on your drawing surface and then let's say that you would go 180 degrees with your angular extent that means you're going to draw a 180 degree arc 
or curve starting at the 45 degree point. That doesn't quite make sense. Whenever you play around with this, it will. And I'm going to show you, of course, uh, an example here. So I'm going to come in here and type in 150. And I'm just going to make my height and width 100 both. And then I'm going to start out as a 45 degree angle. And then I'm going to draw 180 degrees. And then at this point, you have to define what type of arc or curve you want to draw. And you do that by going arc 2D. And if you do not want the ending and starting positions to come together, you would put open. If you do want the straight line drawn from the starting and ending positions of this arc, in that situation, you would put cord. And if you would instead like it to be a pie shape so that they make like a piece of pie, you would put pie inside of there. I'll show you what all of them look like so that you know. So let's just copy this guy and paste it in here three times, right like that. And then I'm gonna change this slightly so you can actually see them on the screen. Change this to 45, change this to 250, and change this to 45. And in this situation, I'm gonna make this a chord, which is just gonna draw a straight line, and this is going to be a pie, which is gonna make me a piece of pie. So that's cool. And then after this, if I want to paint an object, uh, basically I can define a color used for my rendering. And I'm just going to type in graph 2 so that you can see what this stuff looks like. And then you can define colors in a couple different ways. Uh, I'm going to just start off here. And if you don't put anything in here, Clips is going to show you a whole bunch of colors that are built in. See, there's a whole bunch of them. And I'm just going to choose black at this point in time, semicolon. And then what you do is you go graph 2 and you call the draw method. And then you tell it what you want it to draw. So I'm going to say I want to draw a line, which is the name of this variable that I created right here, this shape right there. And then if I want to draw other things, I just continue to call the draw method inside of here. So I can go and define this as 2 and 3. And then just copy this, throw that in there, and then just call this two and three. Make it easy. And I can actually file save it. Let's see what it looks like. And there you can see there's the weird looking shapes that I drew. There is the arc that is open. There is the arc that's a curve. And there is the arc that's a pie shape. So a bunch of scribbling. Like I said, it's not going to be beautiful. But the whole point is to just let you know exactly what methods are available. And make this. I'm going to kind of draw a face here. I'm going to let this be 45 as well. And now I'll show you how to draw an ellipse or a circle or anything like that. So just go shape. I'm going to call it draw ellipse. Just go new ellipse. 2D and I'm going to go float and then here you define your upper left hand corner X position, upper left hand corner Y position and your bottom right hand corner X position and your bottom right hand Y position. And there you go. You just drew an ellipse. Now if you'd like to draw yourself a rectangle that has rounded edges just go shape, draw, round rect, new, and then you're just going to call a method called round rectangle 2D. And I'm just going to put double in here, and it doesn't matter. 25, 25. And basically, you're going to define your upper left hand corner XY position, your bottom right hand corner XY position, and then you're going to define the arc height and the arc width for the rounded rectangle. And then you just close that off. You could draw all kinds of crazy things inside of here. You can draw a curve that's defined with four points. And in this situation, that's known as a cubic curve, 2D. And I'm just going to call it cubic curve. And then go new curve, 2D. And of course, you can call this constructor and then define or set all the constraints using an outside method, cubic curve. And that method is called set curve in this situation. And then basically, you're going to define all of the points for this four pointed curve. So we're going to go define the upper left hand corner. I don't think I have to keep saying that. And then you're going to define your second point. And then you're going to define your third point. And then you're going to define the last point. And then Java is just going to figure out what you want to do thereafter. So that's the whole point of that. I don't know why, but I forgot to cover regular rectangle before I covered a rounded rectangle. And I'm just going to go float, throw that inside of there. And you can see here, X, Y position, width, and height. So I'm just going to make this 300, 300, and with a width of 150, and a height of 100. And there you go. Now you can draw rectangle angles on the screen as well. And also you can draw curves with three points and just go new. This is one of those tutorials I'm doing out of my head. And I'm just going to go float with this one. And then again, you're going to define all of your different points for the three-pointed curve. So I'm going to go 300, 100, 400, 200, 150, and 300. And there you go. That's a three-pointed curve. And I'm also going to draw another rectangle that's going to be transparent. 
over top of another rectangle. And in this situation, I'm going to define double. And then of course, this is very simple. This is just going to be 300, 300, 75, and 50. There you are, drew another rectangle. Like I said, that's going to be transparent over top of another rectangle. So let's start drawing these things out on the screen. Copy this up here, because we'll be drawing a lot of stuff. So draw, and the first thing I'm going to draw is my ellipse. There that goes. I could also change my fill color like this. You want to change your fill color, you call set color, and I'm going to call it color green. And then if you want to draw with a fill instead of just empty lines, you go fill. That's it. And I'm going to draw a rectangle. If you want to change your stroke color, call set paint color and then this is going to be black and then we can draw some of these other weird curves inside of here so cubic curve there that is draw our other rectangle we're going to put inside of here Let's just change this to draw rect and then draw our quad curve which is going to be a four pointed curve and then if you want to draw things transparent you just go graph two just like before and then let's look for set composite save ourselves a ton of time there it is and i'm going to go alpha composite get instance Again, this is for drawing things transparent. Alpha, composite, SRC, over that. And then if you want to draw something at, say, 60% transparency, you're just going to come in here and go 0 0.40F, right like that. And there you go. And let's file save this. Take a look at what we did. And there you go, right there on the screen. There's your little circle. And I was trying to draw like a little goofy looking face. And then here's all the different curves that are available. Like I said, just go in there and play around with it. And you'll get really good at moving these guys around. Another thing you could do here is go graph two and fill and get new rectangle 2D dot float. Let's just call this directly to save some time. And then go graph two, draw a filled shape. And this is going to be draw. And in this situation, I'm going to use that transparent rectangle that I just created there. And then if I run this, you can see here that where the transparent shape shows up here on the screen over top of our little alien weird looking thing. And then, of course, if you wanted to get rid of the transparent, of course, you could just delete it out of there. But probably a better way to do it is to come inside of here and just set this value over here to one. And there you go. That's going to get rid of the transparent for you. And then we can execute this. And there you can see it's no longer transparent. It's black. And the last thing I'm going to show you how to do here is how to draw gradients on the screen. And for some reason, people think this is complicated, but basically what we're going to do is go gradient paint and then go the gradient, the name I'm going to give it, new gradient paint. And then you're going almost always type in zero, zero in this situation. This is going to be the starting point for your gradient. And then you're going to define what the starting gradient color is going to be. So I'm just going to make it blue in this situation. And then you're going to define how long. So let's say that I want this to be a vertical gradient, which means the gradient is going to go from the top to the bottom. Well, I'm going to leave this at zero for the X position unless I want this gradient to go at an angle. Again, you need to play with this stuff to get used to it. And then I'm going to define how many pixels I want the blue to go to before it changes color. And I'm going to show you another way using hex codes to define another customized color. And this code right here, 66FFFF, is actually cyan. So if you would want to create any kind of customized hex coded colors this is exactly how you would do that of course you have to put a zero inside of there first and that's how you define a hex color for using inside of here for pretty much a limitless number of different gradients and then to use this customized gradient inside of this J frame we're just going to go again graph two, set paint and then we're just going to take the gradient right here copy and paste that in there right like that right like that and now you're going to be able to draw with gradients and we'll see what that looks like. There you are. There's a gradient now. And like I said, coming down from the top. And then if you want to change the way the gradient goes, and of course you can just manipulate these as much as you want. You can just change this to 60 and change that to zero. And there you go. Now your gradient's going to go from left to right instead of the way you saw previously. And then the last thing I'm going to show you how to do is if you wanted the color defined right here, the last color defined to show up in the center of the gradient and then move outwards, all you're going to need to do is go right after this color, put a column in there and then put true, file save. And there you go, you got exactly what you were looking for. The last color that you define is going to be the center point, and then everything's going to gradient off of that. So there's pretty much all the different 2D tools that are available to you. In the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a customized paint application. Leave any questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.